Hello my creatives and welcome to another video. So today I want to do another junk journal with me and this time I want to create a pocket on this page with this vintage postcard. Now don't worry I have another one with this backside. But I really loved the image so I thought I would use that, be brave and just use <laughs> the stuff I have. Uh, I also want to create a tag and I'm, to go in that I'm going to use this stencil by Tim Holtz as a template to create my tag so this I will trace this and cut it out so I have a nice size then uh, of course we need to do the background so I have some scraps here some neutral scraps and um, because this is quite a big page I thought I would make use of a very big book I have so this is a very very big book with beautiful illustrations in it botanical illustrations and I picked out this page and I want to use this illustration from this book. So I still, of course, need to fussy cut it, but I wanted to, well, let you see how big it is. So if I put it next to my journal, it's actually a really, really big page. So I need to cut some of this off, but this will be perfect because I will lose something of the bottom, which is not very important. Then the most exciting thing I want to do is I want to do some hand sewing around the pocket on my page so it will go through to the other side and I want to do some hand sewing on the tag um, I don't know if this will work I, I never did this kind of stitches in hand sewing so uh, let's see and of course I will do some stamping some background stamping I think with this stamp from Tim Holtz and I will use this splatter stamp I think and of course, my new favorite scorched timber will be my ink color. Now, that is the plan for today. I don't know if I will use more stuff, but this is <laughs> where we will start. So first of all, I want to do some background stamping because the postcard will be here. And um, well, it, it's a beautiful map page, but I want to do a little bit more to it. So I'm going to take out, I guess, this vintage photo archival ink. So why I'm taking archival ink and not this one. I know this one dries almost immediately on this slick surface. And this one will take forever to dry. And I, I'm, I don't have the patience for that. So I'm going to take vintage photo, I guess, on this uh, page. And do some background stamping with this stamp set. So I was thinking about using this one for the background and I just want to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm thinking about stamping it diagonally so there is some kind of movement on my page. And I grabbed the stamp block but I usually do not use stamp blocks for this because I don't need a perfect impression. For me it's all about the texture, interest and background. And that means that it doesn't have to be pretty. Also it's close to the spine so that will be a big hassle. So I'm just going to stamp it like this. Oh yes, I'm very happy. I'm also very happy with this color. I didn't want to go too dark uh, because it is already a very busy page. But I did want to add some extras. And now I just stamp wherever. So I'm going to take a magazine page and try to not stamp on the other page because I don't know what I want to do on the other page. That is something for a later date. Uh, yes. Now, of course, we also need to do it on that corner. And then I will see if I want to do uh, to add anything else. For me, it's a process I go through. I start somewhere and then I will figure it out while I go. <laughs> that is usually how I go about creating journal pages yes I do like it I also create somewhat of an triangular shape with my stamp because I like that <laughs> I think it looks more part of the actual page now this is good let's take some scorched timber and distress the edges of this postcard. I was thinking about putting in a notch, but I don't think I want to do so with this 
particular page. I think I want to keep the postcard intact. So all you need is a postcard now and uh, some images and scraps. Now, if you don't have vintage postcards, there are tons and tons and tons of digitals out there. I think Margaret also has a kit called Correspondence with um, vintage postcards. So you can use that as well if you would like. Doesn't really matter. Um, or another book image. You can, do, you can use whatever you want. I wanted to be brave and use <laughs> my vintage postcard. Uh, because I bought a box of envelopes and postcards and it's just sitting here because I'm too afraid to use something. And let's be honest, if it's just standing here, it will not be look pretty or anything. So I'm trying to stop hoarding and to use my stuff because that is why I buy it, right? I don't buy it to collect or anything I buy it so I can use it in my crafting so I should use it in my crafting now I'm happy with this and I also find the funny thing with using the stress oxides that on every type of paper it looks a little bit different so this is a, a bit of a glossy paper and that makes it look a little bit more different than on regular non-glossy paper. I like this. Now let's see. I think this is good. Now I want to do some hand stitching uh, with this green thread and I wanted to do something that also goes into the page. Now I've never done that before. So if it's a big disaster, we will see that together and then I will fix it. But I think this looks pretty good. Maybe I want to add some labels or something later on here in the back, but I don't know yet. But to make my life easy, I am going to stick this on with some glue because I wouldn't want this to move around. If you are a pro hand stitching person, just, just you know lay it on top here and do your thing. I'm not, uh, so I will add this with a bit of glue on the place that I want to have it and then we are going to make our holes and do the first stitching I also like to do that in um, on different times I know I want to stitch on the tag as well but because stitching takes up some time I prefer to spread that out in my crafting session to not do all the stitching at once. But that's just me. Okay, I think about here. Because I need some extra room for the stitch that I want to do on the sides. Now I haven't looked up a tutorial for this. <laughs> uh, but it is a similar stitch to a bookbinding stitch I have learned. And I thought well if I can do it for bookbinding then why not do it for this page. So that is stuck down and now we have here our pocket and as you see this shape or this tag size fits in perfectly and I still have some space here on the side. Now I have a piece of foam that I'm going to put underneath and then I will start making my holes. Um, I need something else for that. Be right back. I have my ruler here because I would like my stitches to be a certain amount spaced from each other. Now this is a ruler in centimeters because I live in the Netherlands. I usually work with centimeters. So that makes it easier for me to figure out how I want to do it. Uh, but by all means, do your measurements with inches or anything else uh, that you want. Um, it's, it's up to you. I think I would like to start... Do I want to start here on the top? And then go in. Yes, I want to start here exactly on the edge of my postcard. And I'm going to do one centimeter apart from each other. 
which is, I don't know, half an inch or something. You do you, I do me. Uh, now this is a bit difficult in this angle for me. But I'm just poking my holes. And I will do that for all the sides of the postcards. And I'm going to punch one here, just below. And I also need a second row that is on this paper. Uh, because I want to do a stitch that goes like this, if you can follow me. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to do that with you together so you can see how I go about that. Then I don't need this one, I believe. And if I do, I can always do that later. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. Do I need this one? I do think so. Nine. Now I will continue this process for all the holes. Um, I will poke them and then I will show you where we are at. I punched my holes and I already know that I'm not going to that I are not going to match up on the sides, but. It's an experiment and we're just going for it because I already punched the holes and uh, it is what it is, right? So let's take enough string. So I'm going to take three times this side, three times this side. I think three will be enough. And three times this side. And then a little bit more uh, because I don't want to run short and have to think about that. Now, let's take my needle. Needle, needle, needle. I grabbed everything. Yes. I just have a embroidery needle uh, with a blunt uh, tip, so I don't, you know, stick it into my fingers. Now, I thread it through, and this is a trick I learned. So I take the ends and put it around my needle and then I turn it around a couple of times, keep it tight and then I pull it through and then it should create a knot on the back, which is great. <laughs> so this is a knot exactly on the back. Now I will start from the back because I would like the big knot to be there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the back side of the page. And if you can do this better, I probably do this all wrong, but this is what I had in mind. I'm going through the back of the page to the next hole. And then I go out to the outside hole, go back through this hole, and then we go to the next hole underneath it. I don't know if I can explain this word very well. And then I go back. And I'm not a professional embroiderer, so um, probably the black back will not look as nice. But I'm trying to make somewhat of a pattern with going outside. And then, like I said, I didn't watch a tutorial or anything, going back through the same hole. And then going here. And I think for me the challenge is that um, it will be on the other side of my page. So what to do with that, right? Uh, how would it look? And can I maybe incorporate it into my next project or not? So this is what I'm going to do as a pattern. So it has uh, one here on the top and then on the side. And I will continue that for all the... Um, 
signs. I don't know if this will work, but we will see. And I'm going to do this and then I will be back with you. I finished the stitching. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. Does it look super cool? Yes, it does. So I'm super excited. As you can see, there are uh, different spaces that are not <laughs> exactly the same. And I decided to not use the hole here on top, but to make a new one. So this would line up because I didn't like that. Um, this bothered me not as much as when it would stick out. Uh, then this is the back. I just tied it off here. And I think this also looks pretty cool. So I don't know what I can create with this, but this is here. Maybe I can incorporate it into something. Um, but this is how the page looks right now. <laughs> I'm actually very excited and glad it worked. I'm sorry for my bad explanation about this. Or maybe not showing it properly, but it's because I also don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just here to inspire you and um, to give you some ideas. And maybe you can find a professional who can actually explain what I did. Or maybe you can figure it out for yourself. So I, I apologize for that. I try my best. Now, next is the tag. And I would like it to have this shape to go in here. And uh, for that, I just need a piece of paper. I have a piece of craft cardstock here that I'm going to use. And then I'm just going to, oh, this is a little bit short. Just going to trace around this tag and I'm going to cut it out. Kira, then you need a pencil here. This is how I made tags whenever I started out. I just used this Tim Holtz one as a template for the top. And then I would just cut it short anywhere I want. And you also have the tiny Tim Holtz ones. You can also use that as a template. Um, but of course there are a lot of ways. But I thought for this video I would show you how I did it as a beginner. And now I'm just going to cut it out. I fortunately... And pretty good at cutting straight with scissors, but by all means, just use your paper trimmer, ruler, and a knife. It's up to you what you prefer. So now we have our base, and then it's time to do some collage, some background collaging for our beautiful floral. So I have picked out all neutral ish kind of pieces from my scrap box. I have a glue stick here that I'm going to use and now I need a glue page. So let me look for that. Yes, I will use this. Uh, now the collaging for me is just, you know, um, random. I do whatever I feel like I want to do so I don't really think about this process. I do know I don't want to ink these separate pieces because I would like it to be one uh, one piece or it look like one piece. Also I don't mind in which direction papers are. If a corner is on a corner then I will use it on a corner because that saves me a lot of hassle in the end. Uh, so that is what I do. I also don't mind the... I will take my other Tim Holtz ruler. Um, why? Uh, because this is lines and I can see better if I tear something straight or not. Ooh, do I like this side? <gasps> yes, I prefer that side. So I have all kinds of different scraps and uh, I just go to town. Let's have fun, it's just the background, doesn't really matter. You can add whatever you want uh, maybe even do some mixed media or some more stamping i don't know yet what i want to do um, later on but um, we will figure that out together maybe a piece of this brown i want it to be eh, not the brown maybe this writing um i'm going to tear it here this is these are all um, book pages <laughs> that I have thrifted and, and these are all scraps of them. So no 
fancy scrapbooking paper or anything, just just book pages. And uh, I love to go thrifting to find all kinds of different books. I also open up a lot of books to see what the typography is, because I think that's super cool to have different kinds of typography, paper colors, <clears throat> you name it, I like it. Uh, this is a scrap, scrap from a magazine, from a um, sewing magazine. So I'm just going to add that here. Um, yes, what else do I have? I also have this, I don't know. Oh yes, I have this botanical here. I don't know if that is what I want. Let's see. Let's put this just down. It's a rectangle, so let's go for it. And put it here. And I make sure that I overlap the pieces and I change the direction of uh, the paper. Now I have this one. Yes. That is also from when I made labels, I believe, I used this paper. So it's a very nice rectangle. Um, this one, some French, super thin French paper. And I have, let's see, I have this. It's a beautiful color, isn't it? Beautiful color, but I don't know. Let's add another piece of this. I also like to repeat the same types of papers to make it a bit more cohesive. Take it down. I think this is one of the most relaxing things for me to do, to just take scraps, don't think about it, and just stick them down. I also love this. Also, I don't know what I'm going to cover up later on. Um, and I don't worry about that, because this is just a background. And if I would worry about that, I would never get anything done. So just try <laughs> not to think as much and um, go for it stick down some papers and everything always goes through an ugly phase just so you know I think this I'm going to stick this one upside down or maybe here oh yes I prefer that um, everything goes through an ugly ugly phase just so you know <laughs> So it's not you, it's the process. It's meant to be ugly at first. <laughs> and then um, you will find your way. Just don't give up. Um, and not everything has to be perfect as you saw on my sewing. It's good to experiment. That's why we have journals. Um, so we can experiment with them and do all kinds of fun stuff and see what we like. Sometimes we like something and sometimes we don't. I always keep everything um, simply because of the reason that I know that I did like something or I didn't like something. And I can look back and see, oh yes, I created that. And sometimes I learn from what I made. And then because I see it again, I think, oh, but I should do that differently. And then I will probably like it. I think this one goes here. Yeah. This. And stick it on. Now we have our background. Of course, there are some pieces hanging over so I'm just going to take my scissors and cut those off okay. 
this. And on the side, maybe you should let it dry. But I am very impatient. Okay, this is our background. I think that is perfect. So I will move all of this aside. Close the glue. I think this looks great. So now we take the scorched timber and I'm going to ink up the edges. Oh, I love that. Absolutely love that. I do think I also want to do some of the stamping I did on the page, on this piece, to bring in some more of the um, page onto my project so it's more cohesive. Also I'm going to do the back. Oh, later on I also want to add an eyelet and maybe a piece of ribbon but I didn't grab that so just so you know we're probably going to do that as well. So inked it all up. Now let's grab the stamp we used. Where did I put it? I'm such a messy crafter, I always lose everything. So here's our stamp and our ink. Ooh. And as you see, <laughs> I throw with my stamps and I do this completely random. So I don't really think, maybe I should have put this underneath. I don't really think too much about it uh, because if I would, I would never create anything again. I'm just, Adding nice background texture. And if it's not stamped completely, that doesn't really matter because it is a background and not something that has to be seen. It just gives a little bit more interest. Like this. Now I'm looking at this. I think it would also look very nice if we did something a little bit darker but which one I think this one let's try out with scorched timber I don't stamp a lot with my oxide so let's see if I like this doesn't really make all that of a difference but now there's more texture. Okay, next up for me is to cut out this image and then we will put it on top here and then we can see what uh, is still missing. After I did that, I will be back with you. I fussy cut the botanical and I was looking at it and I thought something was still missing. So I grabbed these labels from Michelle from the Junk Journal Studio and I thought I could maybe enhance it a little bit on some places by putting on some labels. So let's do that together. Let's figure out what would make this um, page or this tag look more interesting. Uh, also, don't forget, I still want to do some stitching around this um, uh, words around this tag. I don't like the circle. Um, because I'm using all squares, I don't like the circle. I also don't think I like this one. So maybe I want to just have rectangular tags. Let's see what I can find. So this is, yeah, just a process of, you know, trying out stuff and putting things back. Also, I think my labels turned out a bit yellow because, or too yellow, because my printer of new toners I got from my printer. And I don't think I really like these toners, which is funny because I bought them at the same place I did before and I really liked them so maybe they changed the formula or something for the toners which makes me sad but it is what it is uh, do I like this one here 
and then maybe this one here and do we have something smaller of course we have or do I do like this one no I think maybe this one is also a bit too white I also have labels from Tracy Fox so maybe I should try those because those are a little bit um, they have less stuff on them maybe that is what I like for this for this tag to give it just a little bit more interest and not you know overpower my flower and then maybe a small one here underneath I do think I like that I prefer that I guess so I'm sorry Michelle not your labels today but I do love her labels I'm going to ooh, distress them as well with scorched timber and this one Oh, I think there's also one with specimen in here, in this box. So let's see if I can find that one. Field specimen. I like this. But where? <laughs> where? That is always the biggest question. Where do you want to put something? Do I like this, maybe? And then behind? I think so and then maybe this tiny one here yes and then this one on top I do like that a lot I have to say now that lines up too much so I don't like that Or just turn it why not okay changed my mind I want to have this one here yes yes changed my mind so I'm going to add these and then I'm going to stick everything down so let's grab a glue stick I like to use glue stick for this because you have a little bit of wiggle room when you put stuff on I'm going to have the flower a little bit lower so then this also needs to go a little bit lower straight please and And this one, because I'm going to make an eyelet with a ribbon on top, and then maybe I want to have this one here, and then this one here, underneath the flower, yes. As you can see, you are allowed to change your mind all the time, <laughs> because that happens to me all the time. I like this. Now, next up, we're going to glue down the botanical, and that is what I'm going to do with some regular glue or some liquid glue, because I have this, it's just cheap glue from Action in a fine tip bottle and I very much like the fine tip bottle because I have much more control about how much glue comes out of my bottle because these come with very big nozzles and when you use them a lot of glue comes out and it soaks your paper and it's not nice to work with so I prefer putting my glue in these smaller 
bottles with a fine tip. Don't have to glue it all the way down. Okay, I think that is enough. Now, let's add on this beautiful big botanical. I think about here. Yes. <gasps> Covers up the F a little bit too much. This makes me very happy. Now, snip off the excess, adding a bit more glue to the bottom, even though I don't think it's necessary because I am going to stitch a bit more ink also on this leaf here on the side. So what I'm going to do is pretty much the same stitch as I did before, but I don't have the holes here, of course, so it will flip over. And that was the plan. So let's see, where did I leave my foam? Now I'm going to do exactly the same, only one row of holes here. And um, I'm using my ruler as a guide of how much space I want from the side. And uh, yeah, I think I just go to town with this. So exactly the same distance again. And we will see if we will, <laughs> that will be right. If not, I can always change it. And with the other part we stitched, we already saw that it would be fine. Not perfect, but good enough. So I'm going to poke my holes on all sides of this tag and then I will be back with you. I have punched all the holes. Now they're all irregular again <laughs> because my measurements didn't no, yeah, will work out, but I don't care. Uh, I also already prepared my thread. It's a super, super long thread because I want to try to do it in one go. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the back again. And I think it's best to start somewhere in the middle. So you don't have to worry about a corner at this time. And you pull it through. You flip it over. Go back through the same hole. And then we have this on the side. So it's over the side. Then you go to the next hole and it's a super long unhandy thread but I think I'll be happy about this later on. So I pull it through then go over it again and pull it through again Like this, so you have pretty much the same stitch as on the pocket we did. Now on the back, it's true, you have not not one here, but let's try if we can figure out how to do that. So I went to this, and then I think we have to go somewhat again, and let's go to the next hole. I have to figure this out guys and then no because then you have the same problem later on because then there will be no stitching here okay I will figure this out I will do my original plan so the front is <laughs> nice looking so let's go back that's the beauty of Working with embroidery is that you can correct your mistakes by going back through the same hole. Which has saved me a lot of times. Also with the previous... No, 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 don't. 
No knots, please. Thank you. Okay. I will continue. So, it's here now. Yes. Okay. So, we have it here. Go back. So, Oh, I already remember, because I'm doing this thing that I did with um, bookbinding. Um, I can go back later on and fill in. So first of all, just do this pattern, and then later on, I think when we are full circle, I can fill in all the gaps with a normal stitch. So let's hope I am right. I hope you have seen a little bit how I'm doing this. Like I said, for me, it's also figuring out. But I just want to inspire you to be brave and try out new things in your journal, even though when you don't know how to do them, just do them and try. And maybe it will look super cool. Maybe it sucks, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter because I'm having fun and I'm trying out something new. And maybe I do really like this. I want to put it on other things as well. Now, I will do the whole tag. And um, we'll come back to you when I'm finished. Because this will take uh, some time. Not ready with the embroidery yet. But I want to show you something. Because I've went around uh, one time, as you can see. Uh, and it still has these holes and I was right because now I'm back in my original hole where I started and if I go this way I can fill in all the gaps with a regular running stitch and then it looks pretty on both sides as you can see so I'm super happy that that worked out uh, yeah, so I'm uh, going back and forth to fill in all the gaps so that this is the final look for around the whole tag. And I am actually very happy. Now it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be because we're junk journalers. So yeah, this is it. I will continue and then I will be back with you again. I finished the stitching and I'm super happy with the end result. It looks amazing and on this side you can journal if you want. Now at first I said I wanted to do a topper but I put it in here and I thought no, maybe not a topper, maybe it's good as it is because I will lose some of the flower and I don't want to do that. But I did want to add a little bit of hardware. So I thought why not put in eyelets because I can put in eyelets. And I thought, let's do four. And I have chosen this blackish one. Uh, because I thought that would go well with the photograph. So I have my crocodile here. And um, yeah, let's just put in two eyelets. How big are they? They're quite big. So I thought I wanted to add them here, side by side. So first one here. Make sure you don't <laughs> punch through your stitching. Second one here. Eyeballing it will be the same height. And I thought I wanted to add one here. And a second one. A little bit lower. Here. Please let go. Yes, now let's see if these work because I haven't used these before. Ooh, I think they're a little bit bigger than my crocodile. Oh, yes, they go in. Oh, that looks cool. Now put this one in. I have to push it a little bit through, but we will manage. Oh, yes, that looks cool. And they're also crooked, I see. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> push it in. And then the bottom one. To give it a little bit more 
character and have another texture. I think it's fun because we have the thread of the sewing, we have the paper. I think it's really fun. So now let's close them up. One. Two. Yes, that works. So these are very cheap eyelets and they are not as nice as the We Are Mammy Peepers, but they are cheap. And I'm not a millionaire, so I think I need to punch this one a bit more. I say good enough. I don't really. Let's try that again. Yeah, they're in. That's all what it's about, right? And then I saw that I thought the page was still a little bit blank, so I went into the labels, into the labels from Michelle. And I want to add a few here, so I decided I wanted to have one here on the bottom, grabbing my blue page. I already inked them up with scorched timber, so I wanted to have this one here. Then I wanted to have this one a little bit inside the pocket. Over here, so it sticks out. I thought that looked cool. Now I need to put this on here as a guide because I want to see this one, but the other one I don't want to see. And I thought I would to make it freeze and you know your collage oh, sticky page. I want to put this one. Here. And then I want to add this one here on the side. So if you pull it out, you see something else. Like this. Now, let's see. Are we done? I'm going to put the tag in. Oh, I really love the page. I really love it. I think we are done. I think this is it. I'm happy. I'm very happy. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I'm sorry about my not so good explaining and stitching <laughs> things, uh, but I do really love the end result and gives another texture in my journal. I think it is super cool, especially here on the tag that it worked out with a little bit of the hardware. I can still journal on this side if I would like to. And uh, yeah, adding in these labels was perfect. So I used this pretty new map page and turned it into something looking a little bit more vintage, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found some inspiration or at least found the courage to try new things in your journals, even when you don't know how to do them. Just try them out. Everything in life is just trying them, falling, standing up again. And it's the same with junk journaling. I wasn't as good as this when I started out, but I became this <laughs> simply because I did it so much and I tried everything out. And... Um, I went out of my comfort zone like I did with you today. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Bye!